Eilenberg Moore categories provide us with an affirmative answer to the following question. Does every monad come from an adjoint situation? So if we fix a monad T on a category E, we can define the eilenberg moore category E to the T to have objects of T actions, where an action is given by an object X in E and a morphism from Tx to X. And this morphism theta has to satisfy two axioms, the first being that it is invariant under multiplication, meaning that we can take t theta followed by theta, or the multiplication followed by theta, and these two morphisms are going to be equal, meaning that the square commutes. And the second axiom is that it is invariant under the unit, so that we can take the unit first on x, and then theta, and that will give us the identity. Then the morphisms of the eilenberg moore category are t equivariant maps, meaning that if we have two t actions, theta and theta prime, then a T equivariant map is a, is a morphism in the category E, F, from X to X prime, such that this square commutes, meaning that we can take T, F, followed by theta prime, and that's going to be equal to theta followed by F. So let's prove the following proposition. There exists in a joint situation. F to the T is left to joint to U to the T from the eilenberg moore category E to the T to E, such that this adjoint situation induces the monad on t. So let's prove this. Let's first define the functors u to the t and f to the t. u to the t is going to be a functor from e to the t to e. We're going to take a morphism, a t equivariant map in the eilenberg moore category from x theta to x prime theta prime and just forget the t action. And this is going to be a forgetful functor. If that is a forgetful functor, the free functor f to the t, which takes e to the eilenberg moore category e to the t is going to take a morphism in e x to x prime to a t equivariant map where the action is given by multiplication. So we have x going to t x mu x and x prime going to t x prime mu x prime and the morphism f going to t f. So we should verify first that this is a well-defined functor. So we need to show that the free functor acting on an object x is an object in the eilenberg moore category. And this just follows from the associativity law and the unit law for the monad t. If we start with t cubed on x and apply t mu x to give us t squared x, and then again apply mu x, or we could apply mu x on the left and, and mu x the multiplication again, and that is exactly the same thing as what we saw before with the associativity law for the monad. And likewise, the unit law is second axiom for a T action. And so we do see that, in fact, it is an eilenberg moore object. Next, we need to verify that the functor gives us a T equivariant map as well. So if we have a, a morphism F in the category E, then the free functor acting on F should be a T equivariant map. And this follows from naturality of mu. The multiplication followed by tf is going to be equal to t squared f followed by mu x prime. And that's because mu is a natural transformation. Next, we need to verify the adjoint situation. So let's define the unit of this adjunction to be just the unit of our monad. And we can do this because it's easy to see that the composition of u to the t, f to the t, is going to be the same as t since we define the free functor f to the t to take x to an object tx and then the forgetful functor is just going to forget the multiplication action of the free functor on t and so this is a well-defined natural transformation. Next we need to define the co-unit of this adjoint situation epsilon to the t on a component x theta and we're going to define this to be the action, the t action morphism theta. This works because f to the t u to the t acting on a t action x theta is be equal to tx mu x which is the free algebra on an object x and and we have to verify that this is, in fact, a t-equivariant map since our co-unit needs to be a morphism in the eilenberg moore category. So to verify that this is a t-equivariant map, we have to show that the following square commutes. But we see that this square is the same thing as the first axiom for the definition of a t-action. And so we see that this is, in fact, a t-equivariant map. And our co-unit is well-defined.
Next, we need to show that our unit and co-unit satisfy the triangle identities for the joint situation. So first we have epsilon f to the tx precomposed by f to the t eta x is equal to mu x precomposed by t eta x. And that's because f to the tx has action mu x, the multiplication, and epsilon, the co-unit, takes the algebra to its action. And, the, and so we have epsilon f to the tx equal to mu x. And likewise, we have f to the t eta x is equal to t to the eta x by our definition of f to the t. And so we see that mu x precomposed by t to the eta x is equal to the identity on, on the free functor acting on x just by the definition of a monad. Secondly, we need to check the other triangle identity. And so we have u to the t epsilon on component x theta precomposed by eta u to the t acting on x theta is equal to theta precomposed by eta x. And that's because, like we said before, epsilon takes the action theta, and u will just take theta to theta, and eta is going to just be eta, and u to the t acting on x theta forgets the theta. So we have this on the left equal to theta precomposed by eta x. And that is equal to the identity on u to the t x theta, which is by definition of a eilenberg mohr object. Next, let's verify that we actually have an equality of the monad that we started with and the induced monad. So let's first check that u to the t f to the t is equal to the functor t. So this functor acting on an e-morphism f, we first take the free functor on it, which will give us this morphism tf from the free objects. Then we forget the action of the free uh, algebras, which is mu x and mu x prime. And so we see that, in fact, it is equal to just the functor t. Next, we want to show that the multiplication is the same. The multiplication of the induced monad being u to the t epsilon f to the t. And we see that epsilon f to the t is this algebra, the free action morphism of the, the free algebra. And the free action is the multiplication by our definition of the free functor. And now if we apply u to the t, which just means we're forgetting the t equivariant part of the map, we end up again with mu. And that shows that we have the endo functor the same and the multiplication the same. And by definition, our unit, eta, is the same. And so in fact, we do have that the induced monad of this adjoint situation is equal to the monad t that we started with. And so if we go back to the original question, does every monad come from an adjoint situation? The answer is yes.